we can work with parallel vectors uh, because we know that two vectors a and b are parallel uh, now here's the definition if there exists a scalar k such that a equals kb i mean this this is the definition we need to work with um, and i just want to help you make sense of it because maybe this doesn't make much sense i know it didn't at first for me first of all what do we mean by parallel that means two lines that don't intersect that's what we mean by two you know that's what we mean by parallel parallel means they don't intersect that's important okay that means they don't intersect they never meet all right fine i love how when you spell the word parallel you need to make two parallel l's to make it right that's how i sort of remember how to spell it that these first two are parallel and the second one is just a single l so parallel all right, so there exists some scalar k. And remember, k is just some number. This right here is just some number. It can be any number. It can be 1, 2, 10, 5 billion, whatever. So there exists a number where you can multiply one of them and get the other one. What I mean by that is that maybe I have one vector right here called a. And I have another vector, let's say, called b. The question is, you know, will these two meet? Well, mathematically speaking, we can figure this out by just saying, hey, does there exist some number that I can multiply this by to get this? Now, remember, we don't have to multiply. I mean, we can multiply by a positive integer like 2, let's say. But if we multiply this b by 2, we get something that's twice as big. So maybe that doesn't work. But what if I multiply it by, you know, 0.5? Oh, that might make it half its original height uh, or sort of length. And that means maybe that makes it work. So this is the whole key, is that if there exists some number that you can multiply one of them by to make the two equal, then you know that they're parallel. So here we have an example. We have this example. We're told that a equals 2, 4, and we're told that it is parallel. We're already told that they're parallel. And it's parallel to b, which is q and 0 0.8. And the question is, uh-oh, what's q? And that's the question. What is q? So here we're not asked to find if they're parallel, we're told they're parallel. And because we're told they're parallel, we know that this right here is true. We know that this exists. That means then I can state without any doubt that A equals K times B. I know this, that there exists some K that I can multiply by B to get A. So let's maybe start working with this. That means two, four, I'm just replacing for A here, equals some number K that I don't know times q times 0 0.8. All right. Well, now I'm supposed to find q, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to find k first. So take a look maybe at the y values here, the y, which is the bottom here. This is 4. We know that 4 is going to be equal to some number times 0 0.8. You know, that's how I get from 4 to 0.8. I know that there must be some number. I know that number exists because they are parallel. So because of that, I can make myself a little equation. Later, we're going to learn this is called parametric equations. But basically, I can just write a little equation. I can say 4 equals k times 0.8. See, I, I don't care about the x's. I'm going to ignore the top stuff. I'm just going to say 4 equals k times 0.8. Remember, this k isn't really top or bottom. It's multiplying everything. So, I mean, I just want you to see that it's the same thing as saying k times q and k times 0 0.8. That's the same thing. This is the same thing as this. Because then I'm going to ignore the top, I'm just going to work with the bottom. So what I'm going to do is look at this and say, all right, well then I'm going to make a little equation. So 4 equals k times 0 0.8. Now if I want to solve for k, I could just use some algebra, right? Get rid of the 0 0.8 by dividing it out. So I have 4 divided by 0 0.8. You might think right away to get out your calculator, but you don't have to. Because if you have a decimal like this, you can multiply both of them by 10. That'll make it 40 over 8. And that's easier to work with, because 40 divided by 8, that's just 5. So now I know that k is 5. Am I done? No. k is 5 is helping me to get the answer, but I need to put it back into here. So because of that, I need to continue. So I need to say, okay, that means 2, 4 equals 5 times q, 0 0.8. And now I can find q. You see, I can write another parametric equation. I can write out an equation for the top here. So 2 equals 5 times q. All right, so 2 equals 5q. Well, then I can solve for q. How do I get q by itself? q by itself is just uh, 2 divided by 5, right? That's how I get rid of the 5. It's multiplying the q. I divide. So q is 2 over 5. 
So I can take a look at this q equals 2 over 5 and just figure that out. I don't need a calculator again because I could just multiply both of these by 2, let's just say. If I multiply both of them by 2, that gets me 4 over 10. The reason I did this is because 4 over 10 is a lot easier to look at, isn't it? 4 over 10 is just, uh, well, if you're not sure, you can always go even further. You can say, all right, I'll multiply this by 10 again. So that means it gives me 40 over 100. You can keep doing that as long as you do it to both sides. And 40 over 100, that should be easy. That's 0 0.4. That's like a percent. That's 40 over 100 is per cent. So you're dividing by 100. Remember in French, cent, cent, cent is 100. So 40 over 100, that's 0 0.4. So now I know then that Q equals 0 0.4. That's the answer. That's what I would put here. That 2, 4 equals K times 0 0.4, 0 0.8. That's what I have to do. And that's how I solve this. Now I can start working with position vectors as well. I think that's another really important definition to make. We can define some sort of position vector. And I'm going to define it like this. I'm going to draw myself a set of axes. Uh, maybe I'll make them black. There we go. Great. So I'm going to mention, I'm going to draw this. This is my X and this is my Y. And what I'm going to do then is, is define some sort of random point here. I'm going to start off with point zero, zero. That's maybe important there. So that's the origin. And then I'm going to have some random point over here. I'm going to call it A and it has some coordinates here. And I'm going to draw a vector between O and A. There it is. It's an arrow joining these. We've seen these before. This is something we've done before. And I'm going to define this vector going from the origin to A. I'm going to define it as little a. That's usually the convention that we use. So we can define it. And this is the notation we're going to use. This drawing right here, we're going to define a position vector as a vector that gets us from the origin to some point, A that has some coordinates. So we're going to define it like this. We're going to write down OA and we're going to put a little vector sign on top of both like this. This tells you that the vector joining this point and this point, that gives you an arrow. See, from one set of coordinates to another set of coordinates, there's only one path you can take, at least a straight line that gets you there. There it is. So that's OA. I'm going to define it then as just this vector A. So just so you know, this is sort of how we define a position vector. Now, can we define a vector between two points? Of course we can. I'm going to define the same way. So I've got from O to this point A, I've got that point right there, and I've got from O to this point B. And now I want to know what's the vector to get me from A to B. That might be my question. You know, how do I define this vector then? You know, how do I get from A to B? Well, I mean, it looks like, geometrically speaking, it looks like it's just, you know, this straight line. Oops, I didn't draw it very nice. Maybe I should try to draw a straight line instead. I'll use my trusty little line maker here, and this will probably look prettier now. So I want to draw this vector here. This is what I want. This is my vector AB. This is actually what I'm looking for right here, okay? Now the question is, and how... How do I actually draw that? Oops, I maybe shouldn't draw too many arrows, but at least this is what I'm looking at. This is the vector AB here. That's the vector AB. We're going to see how else we can define it, because this doesn't really help us if we want to work with this mathematically. So maybe what I can do, I can draw my vector A and my vector B, and maybe I can isolate those two. So what I'm going to try to do now, I know I'm going to maybe mess it up, but I'm going to attempt to take this little vector here. I'm going to attempt to copy it. Let me just see if I can copy it. I'm going to attempt to paste it. Oh, good, that worked. So I'm just going to use that. So that's vector A. I'm going to need that piece. And I'm also going to need vector B. So I'm going to copy that one, and I'm going to try to paste it. I'm glad this worked. I don't feel like drawing them, or else I'm going to draw them really bad. So this right here, here's what I have, right? I have A. I have vector A here, and I have vector B here. This is what I'm, I, I'm here to look at. And I also want, actually, I also want a vector AB, because I know that this right here is my answer here. So I'm just trying to figure out how to geometrically get from one to the other. You're going to see it's going to look a little bit weird, but hopefully it's going to make sense when I'm done here. Um, otherwise, you can just memorize an answer, but I, I much prefer to do it the right way. So this right here, this is the result. This is AB. This is what I want. This is what I'm trying to find here. So I want to see how these three vectors are related. 
Now, what I can do, I mean, I can try to move. Now, here's the problem. Maybe I have to try to, uh, yeah, put this together right here. Can I actually highlight this one? Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do then is try to figure out how to add, maybe I can add A and B to get this. See, I'm trying to figure out how this one right here is related to A and B. I mean, I can try to add A and B, but if I add the two, vectorially speaking, I get an arrow that points to the right. That's not this. All right. What if I add B plus A? Nope, that didn't work either. Do you see that they're not related in that sense? Like, oh crap, what do I do? How do I possibly deal with this? Well, one thing you can do, this is actually pretty neat. What you can do is you can take B and you can take A. So I'm gonna move A over here. And so here's what we call using parallelograms because you can sort of imagine a parallelogram sort of being drawn like this. I'm gonna kind of just try to draw you something interesting here. I'm gonna draw you something that goes like this. Sometimes you can even draw it, you know, you can sort of extend it further like this right here. You can sort of do as much as you want right here like this. I'm just going to try to draw this as a parallelogram. I'm trying to draw things with angles here. What I'm going to attempt to do now, I'm just going to move this out of the way, just to get it sort of out of our way here. And remember, this is still, which one is A? A is the one that goes up. So this is A, this one down here, this is B. So this so far, I mean, this is what I started with, A and B, and I'm trying to get this one. Now here's the problem. A plus B doesn't help. B plus A doesn't help, right? Because I can add them like this. Both of those give me a vector going straight to the right. I want something that goes down. So that doesn't help. But what you can try to do, whoops. What you can try to do, however, is try to work with maybe we can do minus A. So what I'm going to try to do now is draw this one right here, and I'm going to try to do, I'm going to flip it twice. So flip it left and right, and I'm going to flip it up and down. So now I've hopefully got the vector minus a. So maybe I better label that minus a here. So you can do anything you want with the pieces you have, right? You just got to sort of try different things out. This is minus a. Now how could I work with this one? What if I tried to add those two vectors? So b plus minus a here like this. What if I tried that one? It turns out, look at this, look at this. That works beautifully. Do you see how they sort of line up with a parallelogram? That's what I tried to draw here. So do you see how it turns out, whoops, I need the minus. I left that piece, there we go. So it turns out that's the same thing. So this does work. So what I mean by this is that I can state now with confidence, although it maybe looks really weird, I can say then that, I can state it right here, I can say that AB, this vector AB, is the same thing as saying, um, Let's see now. If I was starting off from my start positions, I can say that's, you know, from 0 to B minus 0 to A. That's sort of how I say B. I'm trying to say B minus A. But then anyway, one way to write it is say, well, the vector going from 0 to B, remember, that's actually how we define vector B here. Uh, maybe that's going to look too confusing. I'll just draw it like this. This is vector going from 0 to B, the point B, uh, minus the vector going from 0 to A, because we can define them. I think this will be maybe more clear like this, because that's b minus a vector a. This is how we do it. Actually, maybe even more clear, I should say b plus negatively. I think that's even better to say. Remember, we normally add vectors. So we're going to add just the negative vector. This is what we did. We did b plus negative a. So this is what we can state. So what this really means is that if you're trying to deal with these things right here, try to do sort of second minus the first. That's really what you do here. You do sort of the, the second value minus the first value. In other words, the second point minus the first point. That's sort of how you deal with these. 